warrior. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse in the protection of our children, I'm starting to find out even more things, more things that you, I couldn't even imagine, but we have to address because at the Warriors, we bring you the realities of what is happening in the United States in particular with our kids. So I was doing my weekly Warriors newsletter, and don't forget everybody, go to lynnswarriors.org, scroll down on the right side, e-newsletter, please sign up. I came across some information and a couple of articles as I researched that the states of Wisconsin, Iowa, and Ohio want to, they're proposing, and I did read a few things last week as well, uh, relaxing child labor laws. So I finally sat down and said, let me investigate this. What does this mean, relaxing child labor laws? I learned that already in the state of New Jersey, a couple of other states have been addressing this. Uh, What they want to do is they want to lower the ages, for instance, to 14, 15 for certain jobs, meatpacking industries, um, some very dangerous places. And the child labor laws were set up in 1938 to deal with factories and just this type of thing. Also, they want to expand children can work 14 and 15 year olds can work until nine o'clock at night. Currently, the federal legislation states seven o'clock at night. I know, I know plenty of kids have had jobs that go beyond seven at night, but but this is the law right now. But the most disturbing thing, and uh, as you know, I do these videos very late at night, so uh, bear with me, please. And thank you for listening. The most disturbing thing is the reason, because I'm like, what would the reason be? When I saw a headline, I get ready, sit down if you're not sitting down, a 14 and 15 year old should be able to serve liquor and work in bars and restaurants. Do you know how dangerous that is to have a boy or a girl, 14 years old, working at a bar, restaurant, where liquor is being served, where people can tend to be overserved? where you're putting uh, basically a child, yes, I know they're a teen, but they're still children, in harm's way, for instance, for just having to deal with adults, uh, drunkenness, perhaps, exploitation in many different forms can take place, especially when one is drinking, harmful, harmful practices. And I thought, This is incredible. This is just more of the normalization of the sexualization of our children. This is the way I look at it. I can't look at it any other way. Why are we putting kids into these, let's break it down a little bit, into factories, meatpacking plants, and uh, the reasons given as, which are slim, but as I dig around, is that there's a shortage in the workforce. And you know why, warriors, there's a shortage in the workforce? Because there's so many deaths lately aging population. So many took early retirement. Oh, and the deaths, deaths from COVID also. And um, that's driving the shortage of workers and also driving the current inflation. So we need to get kids into the workforce. I can't think of a worse idea than this. But when I hear letting 14, 15-year-old girls and boys serve liquor in bars? Think about this. This is craziness. So what are we going to do about it? There is an overall objective right now in the United States. And I know you all know this because there's so much information on it. Certainly at the Warriors, we're always talking about it. Children and adults, they want them to, or whoever the, these days are, they want them to become one. No distinction. Everything is one whether it's child sex with adults, child. Obviously, they don't want kids in in schools. They prefer they're out in the meatpacking plants for as long as the meat will be around, right? Uh, Just diminishing and destroying everything. Children belong in school. Children belong protected. uh, Children belong in a safe environment in a home or with a caregiver. And I can't believe that these people, these elected officials, that you and me voted for. We, we, got, we got to find better candidates or we can't vote for these people. We cannot have this. There was also a headline today, warrants further investigation I saw. 
in Chicago, they're allowing the, you know, the media calls these children migrant children. These are illegal aliens. They came here illegally. We want people to come here legally. I don't know why we don't discuss. We do take in a million people legally every year in this country and also a million on special uh, work visas. It's 2 million people. We've lost count of, to be honest, how many millions are here and continue to flood our open borders. No matter what you think of this um, situation with the open borders, it's a humanitarian crisis. Kids are involved. But anyway, the kids can show up in Chicago. Again, I have to do a little more investigative uh, work on this. No questions asked. Yet our children and other you know, children in Chicago have to show proof of vaccinations. Nobody's asking any of these people or kids about their vaccinations, their medical histories. We do know from Border Patrol, we work with those in security, law enforcement. They are bringing lice. They are bringing um, sexual whatever. They are bringing uh, chicken pox. They are bringing all kinds of things. How criminal is this? We're going to put these children in with our children who we were forced to get, whether it's vaccinations, medical records next to strangers, we're just putting our children at risk. When I say to you, there is a war on for our children, there is a war on for our children. I can see it so clearly, much more clearly than six months ago. They will stop at nothing. And I'm not going to get dragged down in the target and um, the saint in clothes that everybody's been talking about. You know what to do, warriors. You learned it here. Power of the purse, power of the wallet. Don't shop there. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing they understand. The only way they change their ways is through the mighty dollar. And as long as we have the dollar, right? Just don't shop there. Don't buy the Bud Light. Don't buy the baby devil clothes. Um, just don't do it. I don't even want to discuss it. Just know what companies are about. Look, uh, research. You can do it. Let's leverage the internet for good. I know it can be somewhat biased about certain things because certain topics I look up or I know something happened, I can't find the headlines, I can't find the research. But if you put a little elbow grease in there, you can certainly find the information. Knowledge is power. Talk to others in your home, in your community. Get the information out. Now, what are we going to do about these legislators? I find it hard to even, even use that word uh, that want to relax our child labor laws. I guarantee, and not in the long too distance uh, future, distant future, I'm sorry, it'll be 12-year-olds. 12-year-olds will be working. Kids belong in school. They belong safe. They belong at home. They belong having fun, running around. They don't belong working. And certainly not in restaurants and bars serving liquor. And that is, that is it's not just working because plenty, plenty of teens have worked in restaurants and Bus boys and waitresses and things like that, summer jobs. Oh, we're not talking about that. This particular bill that's being introduced in Wisconsin specifically has that 14 and 15 year olds be allowed to serve liquor in bars and restaurants. So, you know, as usual, they take the words, they twist them around, they try to make it sound good. We can no longer fall for this. Not that we are anyway. We need to talk about it. Contact. I don't care. We have to keep doing it. We should be on the phones 24 hours a day, on the emails, tying everything up. House.gov, Senate.gov, find out who represents you. Subject line, do not relax child labor laws. That's all you have to put in there. Let's keep it going. We have a lot of work to do, and we're doing it, and we're fighting tooth and nail. We're fighting hard. And... Uh, I'm going to be doing so. We're heading into Memorial Day weekend. I want to do a few more videos, catch up. It's been extremely busy on the ground with everything happening. Uh, please make sure you tune in to my Saturday Lynn's Warriors radio program on TNT Radio Live. You've got Lynn's Warriors on WBOX on Wednesdays at three. WBOX.com. I do a daily program, State of the Nation, four to six p.m. Eastern. We talk about all of these issues and other issues on State of the Nation. Uh, I do that along with Brian McLean. He's in Texas. He just got back from the border. Um, by tomorrow, it'll be up. We had a wonderful man. He is private security on the border. A man named Wyatt, we'll leave it at that, who we just let him talk. There's, I, we can't ask questions. We can't uh, 
pouring his heart out about what he sees on the border. There's no law, open borders. They do their best to keep to keep these illegal aliens off properties. But you know what they do, warriors? They just know where to go because of the cartels. And they go, maybe it's another mile. They go up to the next open spot and they cross over. And the most heartbreaking thing I want to leave you with is when Wyatt, who appears to be an older man, a Texan, loving his, his property, loving the flag, loving all of us, protecting us, is he said when they, and they do it, again, they're private security. They have all kinds of night cameras and equipment and uh, defending ranches. And he said they, they take off when they see them. And uh, the most discouraging thing, though, is they, they go to that next spot because they're told where to go. Remember, this is very organized. Our, our U.S. government is complicit in the largest human trafficking operation in my lifetime and probably yours. But these people go to that next open spot where our U.S. buses are waiting to pick them up to bring them to whatever these centers are they bring them to, or the NGOs who are making tons of money off of this uh, invasion of our country. We don't talk about that enough. And I know, I know it's hard because you're like, what can, what can we do? What can we do? But for a man like Wyatt, lifelong Texan, protecting property, protecting the flag, hearing him, you could hear his heartbreak. This was on the radio. I could hear his heartbreaking. I've been thinking about him all night, this morning, tonight still, because uh, there are many men and women like him defending their property, defending the United States, hanging on. Remember, there's a culture shift now. Everything is different. We have to accept that. And then for him to say that he sees the buses provided by the United States government waiting for them to take them, these illegal aliens invading our country, no questions asked, to these NGOs, centers, processing centers, wherever they go, to then be bused, for instance, to my home city of New York City, the greatest city in the world that they're trying to ruin. But I have to tell you, when I'm out during the daytime and the sun is out, and I live, my windows face, face the Hudson River. And when I saw that parade of ships come up yesterday for the beginning of Fleet Week, I felt very patriotic. I felt very um, encouraged. And to see all of those Marines lined up by the hundreds when the ships pull in, saluting and standing there, it was a good feeling. So we have to remember, these are the things we have to remember are still happening in our country. There's still goodness. And we have to share these stories. We have to start at home and in our community, keep an eye on the kids, talk to the kids. Remember family digital partnerships. We're going into the AI phase. And that is just an open market for sexual predation, bullying, everything you can imagine under the sun. So let's stick with one subject at a time. Right now, you are going to focus on we cannot have child labor laws relaxed in the United States. House.gov, Senate.gov, contact your elected representatives. Tell them you do not want this. That's all you have to put in the subject line. No relaxing child labor laws. Always follow lenswarriors.org. We'll be loading on a lot of information this weekend on the website. Also, stay tuned. We have um, There's a film coming out. I'll leave that for the next video, July 4th, about trafficking that we want, I want, all of, all of you, every American to see. And um, there will be free tickets because we have a pay it forward kind of program. But I'll leave that for the next video. That's going to be on July 4th, birthday of our country. And let me leave you with this. There's a lot of good in this world. There are a lot of good people. You may not hear about them. You may not see them. Don't let the loudmouths, don't let mainstream media, well, turn that off. Dig a little deeper, follow good people. Utilize the internet for good. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Just keep an eye on the kids. The kids need us. The kids need us to give them attention. The kids need us to give them an extra, you know, pat on the back. Keep an eye out eyes on everything. Because remember, what do I always tell you? There is a war on 
or our children in the United States, and I only see it getting worse. Let's stick with the warriors. Stick with what we're doing. Because each and every day, we have successes. Even if you don't hear about them from me, take it from me. I am relentless in my pursuit of success. And if we reach one of you, educate one of you, take care of one problem a day, then we've done our jobs. You have to think like this. It's warrior thinking. Remember, community creates change each and every day. Be a warrior.